When Ford threw their hat into the ring against Ferrari at Le Mans, they were a well-funded underdog. CZ has a distinct pedigree of throwing off production division race guns, which was a natural extension to get into carry optics with their Shadow 2 optics ready. Sig Sauer recently got into the modern race-inspired game with the Legion series of their P320, and specifically the P320 Max series, which comes from the factory with the red dot mounted. So today we're looking at two carry optics hot rods. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the channel, I'm David and this is the P320 Max from Sig Sauer and this is the CZ Shadow 2 Optics Ready. Well, both of these guns are very popular to talk about here on YouTube, and they may or may not make excellent clickbait fodder, which may or may not be the reason I'm making this video. Personalities presenting the pistols generally are not USPSA competitors for which these guns were intended to be shot. If you get really honest about it, they're really just made to be intended to be sold a lot. So that's really gonna be more to kind of general interest guys, but their purpose and kind of why they are the way they are is informed by the rule sets in USPSA and internationally the IP. PSC. Some of you may be saying, how can you possibly compare that optic writing on that gun to that gun that doesn't have an optic? Well, good friend, this is YouTube. And in order to keep monetization, I have to compare unmodified guns. While this is the carry optics gun, I can't mount an optic on it because it didn't come that way from the factory. The P320 Max comes this way from the factory. So to my YouTube manual reviewer, yes, both of these guns are totally stock. This is how they showed up out of the box. They are totally unmodified. As I was filming this video and talking about all the things that I would care about if I were trying to pick a multi-thousand dollar investment to actually compete in, or perhaps just have a really nice range toy, the video ran kind of long. So it's gonna be broken into two parts. The first bit is going to deal with fit and finish, controls and the accessories market available. Video two will talk about performance, the diminishing returns curve, getting the gun set up in race trim, as well as maintenance and then crowning a winner between the two. So this is part one. If you come back tomorrow, you'll be able to see part two. Before we get going with the video, I do want to talk about my buddy Ken's new company, Saker Speedworks. They make apparel for the competitive shooter. Now, if you are a competitive shooter, there's a good chance you have a beard. And if you have a beard, there's a good chance you look like a hobo on the range. Saker Speedworks makes really handsome designs, like this is their carry optics shirt. They've got this lovely logo. They've got open shooter shirts as well. So rather than looking like a hobo on the range here, let me just show you what I mean with how good these shirts are. One second here. See, look at that. I don't look like a hobo anymore. It's fantastic. All of the Saker Speedworks products are printed on top quality tees. They are super comfortable. They are super well fitting. Perfect for the athlete who's training and taking shooting seriously. Or if you just want to look cool when you're off the range going to lunch, Saker Speedworks has you covered. I realize the t-shirts are distracting, so I'll put on my other gear for the rest of the video. So with that out of the way, we will talk about these pistols in kind of a couple different dimensions. We will talk about the fit, finish, and feel. We will talk about the performance, and we'll talk about how I would set them up and get into kind of the aftermarket. Now, I'm not gonna show you the stuff on the gun or how to do it, but just the parts that I would put on these guns in order to set them up for competition and make them truly competition ready. And the reason we go through that exercise is before we really kind of talk about cost and value, because it all factors into the selection when you pick between these two models. But before we go on to there, I would like to appeal to you personally. I am trying to get my silver play button from YouTube at 100,000 subscribers this year. 75% of my views come from people who are not subscribed. So if you've watched multiples of my videos, maybe today consider subscribing. I will always try and make it worth your time every time. 60% of the time, it works every time. Or if you've watched a lot of videos and you just want more content, maybe check out my Patreon. You can support the channel there. If you want to continue to support the work that we do, that's a great way to do it. Now, I have posted complete reviews of both of these guns, so if you want more information, feel free to check those videos out as well, and let's get started. So we'll start talking about fit, finish, and feel, and that's really going to be the most important to inform a purchasing decision and possibly the least important when it actually informs what your score is going to be at the match. So we'll start with the CZ because it is the steel frame gun. It has a lot of presence in hand because it is so darn heavy at about 45 ounces. When you grab the gun, the gun grabs you back. It has best in class checkering on the front strap and the back strap. The aluminum panels that come on the gun, you're gonna think, wow, these are really great. I can really do some work with these, but in actuality, they're really slick. The Grip panels are kind of terrible, but they feel really high quality, and more importantly, they are pretty. Look at those bad boys. 
The actual fit of the gun, it is very kind of tightly fit because the CZ uses a slide in frame, meaning the slide sits down into the frame so it has full length slide rails. The actual wiggle on the slide makes it feel like it's a tighter fit gun even though it is a production gun and not a custom gun. While the CZ has forward serrations that have a good bit of bite, this is improved over the old SP01 shadows that I used to compete with. Because it is a slide on frame, it is kind of a technique specific to this gun that you'll have to learn how to do to cock the gun in front of the ejection port, which is the method most competitive shooters tend to favor. And the reason being is that it's tap, rack, bang, and there's less movement involved, so it's more efficient. Now, the balance on the Shadow 2 is going to be very muzzle heavy. The, the profile is very thin, and it just feels like it wants to point down like that. It's counteracted a little bit when you put a carry optics magazine that's loaded into it, but it is a very muzzle heavy gun. And next is going to be the Sig Sauer P320 Max, which is basically their TXG grip module. It is a slide on frame design and as a result there is a little bit of wiggle at the rear of the slide which is what you would expect from a production gun but it's really no big deal. The slide has these like dovetail cuts all the way that, around the top of it and because the dovetail cuts are so large the slide is so large it's just very easy to grab and manipulate. So the slide manipulations with this slide in particular is amazing. The checkering on the front strap and the back strap of the gun are more aggressive than the side panels, but they do, it is kind of like a shallow fissure texture. So it does need to be cleaned out from time to time as dead skin will accumulate, assuming you practice and you do practice, right? You do dry fire, right? Right? And it's really going to become an issue on the side panels because the, the texture is not quite as deep or aggressive. So it does, you can already see it, I've only shot one match in a couple sessions of filming and you can see the dead skin starting to accumulate where my support hand builds the grip. So as these do get kind of filled up with grit and grime, they do become more slick. So you'll want to use something like a grip enhancer like a pro grip. And the Legion is a thick boy as well. This gun has presence in hand that most polymer frame guns do not due to the fact it is tungsten infused polymer. And there is, I believe, a brass weight inside the grip module to add additional weight to it. The balance of the gun is slightly muzzle heavy so that when you put like a carry optics 23 round magazine into the gun, it actually balances pretty good. And the sculpt on the grip is quite good. So it is an impressive gun. So based on fit, finish, and feel alone, I will favor the CZ Shadow 2, and do not interpret that as the P320 is somehow lacking in fit, finish, and feel. It just isn't a steel-framed gun that bites you really hard on the front and back strap quite like this one does. Now we're going to talk about the controls and the sights on both of the pistols. Starting again with the Shadow 2, it is a double action, single action, and per the rules of USPSA, that means you're going to start with the hammer down, so every stage you're going to have one double action shot. The actual quality of the trigger, people like to freak out about CZ triggers, but it's people who don't spend a lot of time with like high-end 2011, 1911 triggers, typically. It's good, but not great. Like it is significantly better than a service pistol, like much better than what you would just get off the shelf. But as the gun comes out of the box, there is a good bit of stacking on the double action. You can see like, I'm just applying the same even amount of pressure and the trigger stops kind of right there at about 80% away through the stroke and then I have to apply more pressure to make it go through. You can clean all that up with polishing and we'll talk about more of that later, but out of the box, the double action stroke does have a little bit of stacking and it is a little bit heavy. Single action on the other hand is quite short. The trigger profile is set up very well for single action, although I don't necessarily favor it for the double action stroke, but the single action has a little bit of a soft wall. There's a little bit of wiggle. There is a tiny bit of creep in single action. It's not enough to actually affect anything. You can't tell when you're shooting it, but you'll notice it in the safe area. The magazine release on the Shadow 2 is the best in the category. It's perfect as far as I'm concerned. It's so large it's impossible to miss, but at the same way, it's low profile enough that it doesn't get in the way of my support hand, which I am quite a big fan of. Lefties, I honestly don't know or care if the mag catch swaps to the other side. I'm sure you probably have Googled it. The sights that come on the gun, iron sights, good enough for shooting it. If you wanted to shoot it in like production division, you probably wouldn't have to change it. Although the front sight is a little bit fat, but not terrible. It is adjustable for elevation at the rear. So that's kind of cool. You can dial it into your load. And this is where the CZ falls a little bit flat. It doesn't come with an optics plate. You're spending all the money to buy this gun. And then you have to spend some more money to buy a single optics plate if you can find it to mount on this gun. So this is a competition gun, which presumably means it's a high round count gun. Now the 
slide plate optic combo has two sets of screws that can fail and the screws that they use to hold the plate onto the slide are quite small. My buddy John who competes with these guns and is a very high burn shooter says that the screws holding the plate onto the gun are become a maintenance item so every 10,000 rounds he actually pulls his optic off and checks all the screws and replaces them as necessary. I know that to be true because at Area 4 this year both his and another Shadow 2 shooter both shooting optics ready guns had their optics plates work loose and both of them had to relock tight them at the match. Yeah, I didn't think you had to do that either, but there were two shooters on my squads competing with Shadow 2s. Both of them had the same issue. Now talking about the Max, the trigger on the Max ergonomically is very well situated. I quite like how it is and it breaks at about a 90 degree angle. The only issue with the SIG Legion trigger is the reset is super weak and a little bit long. The only reason I say it's long is because you can short stroke the trigger. The quality of the trigger is good, not great. Uh, there is a little bit of mush, typical to a striker fire pistol that is going to be present. But as you can see, the throw is very short. There's a little bit of wiggle, then you're on the wall and then it breaks and there's a little bit of over travel. It's a pretty short throw. The slide release on the Legion is ambi to both sides of the pistol. So lefties are really happy, which means you probably can swap the mag catch. I'm too lazy to do it guys, but I bet you lefties would know. Now let's talk about the scope that comes on the gun. It is the Romeo 3 Max from Sig Sauer Electro Optics, which is a fun word to say. The window on the Max is roughly the size of an SRO. It's like a circle that kind of got mushed at the bottom, so it is a very intuitive sight to aim with. The brightness is very, very good. The glass has a bit of a blue-green tint that does make the dots show up better. So on like a full sun summer day here in Texas, the dot has no problem showing up. But most importantly, the Max shows up with a 6 MOA dot, which is the superior choice for a sports shooter's optic amongst commonly available reticle sizes. Yes, I did just call out your 2 MOA dot as being silly. But the Max is quite a good optic as far as how it presents. It presents like a 2011 open gun, which is great because that's the division that I compete in. So it is kind of high over the bore but it is directly milled into the slide, which is what you want, and it is a very tight fit on how it's milled into the slide. So it's seated very, very well. This is a cut that is better for sport shooting than using a plate system like the Shadow 2 is concerned. So crowning a winner between the two based on the controls and the sights, obviously I'm giving it to the SIG. I think it's awesome that they're becoming a vertically integrated company that is putting red dot sights on pistols from the factory because I do believe that's the future, not just for sports shooting, but for self-defense and duty as well. I can't run the trigger quite as fast on the max and I'm talking literally a hundredth of a second. I can shoot the CZ about a hundredth of a second faster, but that really doesn't matter when you get on the practical shooting and shooting at the speed of sight sort of cadence, at least for me. That's not an advantage that I can exploit. Accessories. Good news. We don't even have to talk about accessories because both these guns are currently the most popular guns in US PSA competition. So everybody is making accessories for them. We can talk about magazines in this segment, which I guess actually kind of skews in CZ's favor. Magazines are significantly cheaper on the Shadow because it's based on a, I guess, nearly 40 year old design now. So there's tons and tons of off-brand magazines. The Metgar mags are fantastic. And you can get them for like 25 to 30 bucks if you do a little bit of searching. Now the SIG does charge more for their magazines. To get a replacement magazine for SIG, you're gonna spend like $45. But the good news about the SIG magazines is it ships with four of them out of the box, which is really all you need to compete. Although I'd encourage you to get a set of dry fire magazine. Both of these guns have the double alpha dry fire mags available, I believe. Those get a set of those and then you can use these for like practice in your match. But the 21 round tubes are, in my opinion, the best choice for the 140 millimeter magazines, which you have to compete with, because when you get proper base plates, not the ones that come on it, but when you get the proper base plates for the magazines, just the grab on how the magazines handle, it's just a little bit nicer. The mag bodies between the two magazines are roughly the same. The magazines that come with CZ are nickel plated, which is a super nice feature. They're super slick. They drop out of the gun really well, which means the follower inside the gun slides up and down real well, but the SIGs have a nice anti-friction coating on them. So it's almost as nice as the nickel plating, but just not quite. But then CZ just kind of throws this plus two base plate at you, which is terrible, making their 17 round tube have uh, plus two, so 19 rounds. 19 is not enough to compete with in USPSA. 21 that comes with the SIG is 
more viable, so you could do 21 plus one, but the SIG magazines will need to be kind of relieved at the edge of the base plate with a file so that they fit the mag gauge. It's about a 50-50 shot, at least with the mags that came with my gun, as to whether they fit the mag gauge or not. Since the CZ is short by four rounds for a standard magazine in carry optics, uh, you'll be getting aftermarket base plates for this as well, and there's some really great options. Both of these guns have carry optics holsters available at ghostholstersdirect.com. You can save 10% on your US PSA gear there with the code GEARUP10. You can see the link in the description. So that's it for this video. Be sure and check out part two where we go through the performance, the diminishing returns curve, setting the guns up in race trim, the maintenance, and overall picking a winner. I appreciate you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, now's a great time to do so, and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.